Hello, and welcome back to the Language Card Games video series. I'm Matthew Boyle, founder of LanguageCardGames.com, How Gamers Learn Languages. Today's topic, setting up a practical weekly schedule for learning with language card games and other card games that we can adapt to achieve our goals. First off, I recommend that we prepare some cards at the beginning of the week that we can use throughout the week. As we know, our willpower is a finite resource, so sometimes during any given day, the fact that we would have to make some new cards might slow us down. But if they've already been made in advance, there's no reason to not start studying. So on Sunday, consider making enough new flashcards that you'll have some to put into your Lightner box every day for the rest of the week. We'll, we'll be talking about what a Lightner box is later in this series, and I'll also link out to that if you're interested. We can also take time at the beginning of the week to make pairs of cards that we could use for the game Concentration during the week. Concentration is the game where you, um, you have pairs of cards, you shuffle them up, put them face down on the table, and you flip over two and see if they match. And if they match, you can take them they don't match you put them back and the next player goes and you try to remember the positions of the cards and when all the cards are taken up the person with the most matches wins um, so I recommend we make these cards and then save those new cards that we've made on Sunday until tomorrow um, even better you can string them out across the week and the reason why I'm suggesting this is so that we have something to look forward to on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If you have some new interesting cards made for yourself but you haven't studied them yet, that can motivate you to begin. Now, the Lightner Box is something we'll do every day, but what else can we do? Uh, on Monday we can do Concentration. On Tuesday we can try to play a card game that we already know using only our target language along the way not our native language. This helps because we already know how to play the game. The difficult part is speaking only in our target language during the game, and that might take a little preparation to learn some key card-playing vocabulary in our target language, but those will be super essential weapons in our arsenal as card langers anyway. On Wednesday, I recommend you try to find a card game from the country or culture whose native language you are learning. I believe you can find video tutorials of these online, and of course, videos of native people playing that game. It's amazing what you can learn about a language uh, by what people say when they play games, isn't it? There are certain phrases you'll learn during a game that you just won't learn anywhere else. On Thursday, we can try practicing the Mind Palace with a select number of cards, including, maybe, a level of our Lightner Box for that day. So, in other words, we could take out those cards and use them. Now, I won't explain the Mind Palace in great detail here, but basically, we draw a card and we try to associate it with the room in our house and memorize it that way. We could also place a card in each room of our house in a twist that I call the card palace as we physically walk around and try to remember which card is in which place. If we have a flashcard that said apple, for instance, we could place that card in the kitchen, mentally or physically. I'll try to put some more information here too and maybe link out to more information about the mind palace and the card palace if I make the, the, a card palace video in the future. But the mind palace is already a known thing, so you can check that out for yourself. Friday night I would reserve to play some of the most popular trading card games in the world using foreign language cards. These could be games like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, or Yu-Gi-Oh! And it would be helpful to have English versions of the cards available as well. Or at least a, a way to look them up online while playing. Another great idea would be to see if you could do a video call with someone who could play those games with you in the target language you are studying. 
Last, on Saturday, I might play games designed specifically for language learning. These are advanced games like Other Tongue and Chinese Champions, as well as games more suitable for beginners, casual gamers, uh, like Fighting Flashcards, Japanese The Game, or Clue, K-L-O-O. So I hope this gives you some fresh insights for how to incorporate language card games and other games into your daily language learning routines. Feel free to pick out what might work for you and experiment with where to insert it into your schedule. If you have any questions or comments related to a weekly language card game schedule, I'd be happy to hash out the details in the comments section with you. All right, that's it for this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you and other like-minded people can find your way back to my latest and greatest content. You can also head over to languagecardgames.com to buy a game, support what I do, and start playing your way to language learning success today. In our next episode, I'll be talking about some of the disadvantages of language card games and what we can do to curb them. Cheers, guys, and thanks for watching.